What's up guys, my name is Brandon, and since iOS 11 is now officially out, I thought I'd take some time to show you guys some of the best tips and ways to preserve battery life on iOS 11, since, you know, the battery life on all devices isn't gonna be as good as it was on iOS 10, iOS 10.3.3. .3. So, a lot of these tips, you're really gonna wanna implement to get the most out of your battery on iOS 11. Now before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I have a lot of in-depth iOS 11 coverage coming very soon and already on the channel as well. I went through every beta, and I also do have a lot of iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 coverage coming out very soon. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any of those videos. All right, so let's go ahead and get into over 15 ways to preserve battery life on iOS 11. So one of the cool new features in iOS 11 is the ability to offload unused applications, which basically will just delete the application but keep the data on your device when you're running low on storage. So you can see this by going to settings, iTunes, and app stores, and offload unused apps. You wanna make sure that is unchecked because you know it's a cool feature and all, but it's just another the process that's going to be running in the background on your iPhone and will definitely eat away at your battery. So let's go back to general. Let's go to handoff and you're going to want to disable handoff unless you use it frequently like I do. So I use handoff all the time with notes and messages on my iMac to my iPhone and then also on my iPad and my MacBook. So I use this all the time. So I use this or I keep this enabled rather. But if you don't use any of these features with handoff, I would definitely disable it. And if you don't even know what handoff is, definitely go ahead and disable this. All it's going to do is continuously look for device with your Apple ID logged in on. So it's gonna use those, it's gonna look for those devices to hand off certain tasks for like notes and messages and things like that. So definitely go ahead and disable that unless you do use it often. So the next way to save battery life on iOS 11 is one of the most important ones. And one of the first things I tell people in real life even that they should do to preserve battery life, not even on just iOS 11, on any iOS version in the future even. And that is to manage your notifications. You should really dive deep into this and really customize which notifications show up for what. So for example, for me, for Twitter, you can see I have my notifications off. And that's because on Twitter, I get a lot of notifications. So that's, you know, a lot of vibrating, that's a lot of noises, that's a lot of badges, that's a lot of connecting to the internet to tell me something new happened. You know, that's a lot of battery life being wasted when I'm gonna be getting those notifications all the time. And not just that, but I don't even need notifications because I open the Twitter app multiple times every single hour. So I don't need a notification to remind me to go into the app. You know, when I go into the app, I'll see what I missed. I don't need a notification to tell me. And that's the same for any other application as well. You know, obviously for phone and messages and things like that, you're going to want to have your notifications and sounds enabled, but you want to go ahead in here and manage what you do and don't want notifications coming through on. And one thing I really like to do on pretty much all applications, especially social media, is enable the badge app icon, but disable everything else. That way you don't get any kind of notification, you know, any kind of sound or vibration, but you get a badge app icon that shows you you have unread notifications. Again, this is the way to go for a lot of applications, at least for me. And I definitely recommend you guys just go in and at least customize a little bit, you know, like for games right here, I don't want any notifications from then. For FaceTime, I do want notifications for that. But you know, for different things like that, like home, I never use the HomeKit application. So I can just go ahead and disable uh, notifications overall for that. You go, we can go down to news, disable notifications for that as well. You know, different applications. Everybody has applications on their device that they don't really need notifications for. You know, if it's like a game and they send you like a promo, you know, every once every month or something like that, you should go ahead and disable notifications because that little bit is gonna add up and eat away at your battery. The next thing you should do is turn off AirDrop and Bluetooth. So if you go ahead and disable Bluetooth from the control center, and iOS 11, that doesn't actually disable it. So if you go to settings, you're gonna notice that Bluetooth is actually still enabled. It's still turned on and just disconnected from whatever it was connected to. So you wanna make sure you go in here and turn off Bluetooth if you're not gonna be connecting to any Bluetooth devices anytime soon. All it's gonna do is keep searching around in the background for a new Bluetooth device to connect to. And that of course is going to eat away at your battery. And it's the same with AirDrop as well. Go ahead and disable AirDrop if you do not use it. So if you go to settings, general background app refresh, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this is either turned completely off or while on Wi-Fi only. And I actually prefer Wi-Fi only because I like my apps to be uh, refreshed in the background, but only when I'm on Wi-Fi, because that means I'm at home and I have access to a charger, you know, pretty easily. So if not though, you should definitely make sure you don't have Wi-Fi and cellular turned on. That's the only option I definitely recommend you do not have enabled for background app refresh. So if we go back, you can also disable this for certain applications as well. You know, all this is gonna do is just refresh the content in these applications in the background, which of course is gonna eat away at both data and battery. And if we go 
back and then go down to iTunes and App Store, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that automatic downloads is completely disabled for all four of these options right here. You know, the only one I would really consider is updates for applications, but I personally don't like that. I personally like to update whatever applications I want to when I want to, but also make sure that you have used cellular data completely disabled at all times. Now, if you go back and then go to Siri and search, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that applications, some applications are disabled. That way Siri isn't going to search through every single application and take longer, thus using more battery life. So for instance, I don't want Siri searching through happy check. So I'm just gonna go ahead and disable that. You know, it wouldn't really anyways, but if I don't want Siri searching through Instagram, I can disable that as well. If I don't want Siri searching through Snapchat, I can disable that as well. So I would go in here and kind of just disable whichever applications you don't want Siri to have to search through and take up more time and battery life. So if we go to our cellular option right here, you're gonna notice that we have some new uh, settings in here, which actually moved from the phone application. So they're now in cellular instead of phone. And that is Wi-Fi calling is a big one. We also have calls on other devices and carrier services. You want to make sure that Wi-Fi calling is turned off. You can see here, it says make and receive calls over Wi-Fi with your Verizon account. I personally have never used Wi-Fi calling at all and I definitely recommend you just disable that as well and then if we go down even further you're gonna notice down here near the bottom that we have Wi-Fi assist so you want to go ahead and disable Wi-Fi assist that way that when your cellular data is weak it's not gonna rely on both Wi-Fi and cellular you know always looking for the best connection for both it's just gonna use up more battery life so I would turn Wi-Fi assist off here in the cellular settings and then iCloud Drive here as well go ahead and disable this this is actually gonna use you know cellular network to transfer documents and data which you definitely do not want for iCloud Drive because a lot of times those uh, you know the, the documents in there and, and everything in there is going to contain a lot of storage it's going to be bigger files than what you're used to so you don't want this happening in the background while you're still on LTE the next one is an obvious one but it is to use low power mode whenever you can even if you're at 99 or even a hundred percent if you know you're going to be away from a charger if you're like in a flight you know if you're in an airport or something like that you know most of the time you do have chargers but just for instance if you're on like a road trip or something like that and you're not going to have a access to a charger for a very long time I would turn on low power mode from the very, very beginning. That way you can preserve your battery life as best as possible. So it is pretty annoying with the screen dimming and things like that, but it's something you're gonna have to use if you want to you know, extend your battery life longer than normal. The next one is another very important one and that is in the mail section right here. So in mail, if you have an account set up in your mail, you're gonna wanna make sure that fetch is turned off. Now you can see I don't have any accounts in here because this is not my daily driver, but you want to disable mail fetch and you wanna switch it to manual mode. That way your iPhone only checks for emails when you open up the mail application. I get a ton of emails and back in the day, this was actually the number one contributor to my battery draining. So definitely a must do if you do get a lot of emails. So if you go to privacy and then location services, you're gonna want to disable some of these settings here in system services. So personally, I always disable the product improvement settings right here, just because you know it's good for app developers and things like that, but it's just another process running in the background of your phone that does contribute to battery draining. You can also disable things like HomeKit if you don't use that, the Compass if you don't use that ever, location-based anything, you can disable that if you want, just so it's not always looking for your location. You can go into significant locations and turn that off if you want. I personally like this. A lot of people find it creepy, but I personally like this, but it does eat up some of your battery. So yeah, I would go into the system services here and just figure out which ones you don't use, which toggles you don't think you'll use and disable them just so it's not running any other kind of process in the background of your phone when you don't even know it's happening. Another obvious one that I always see people, especially in real life using, is the vibration. So you wanna go to your sound and haptics right here and completely disable vibrate for everything. The motor to make your phone vibrate definitely does eat away at battery and I would always have vibrate disabled. So if we go back to privacy and go down to motion and fitness, you can turn off fitness tracking and health if you want to. I personally like tracking my steps and things like that, but if you're not into that, I would definitely disable this because your iPhone, whether you know it or not, is always tracking your steps every single day, every single minute of the day. So go ahead and disable this if you're not into that kind of thing. My next tip is to buy an Anchor or an Aki power bank. So I use these all the time. So this is a 30,000 right here, the Aki, and then we have a 10,000 here on the Anchor. So definitely look into buying a power bank if you don't have one already. They are absolute lifesavers. They'll charge your phone from zero to 100% like seven times. So an absolute lifesaver. I use it all the time when I'm traveling or if I'm in the car for a long period of time absolute lifesaver. I definitely recommend you get a battery pack. Now, if you've done everything in this video, you have battery packs and everything, but your phone is still continuously dying. It's continuously draining on the battery. I would really consider getting your battery replaced by Apple. Now, if you have an iPhone 7 or 7 Plus, that's probably not the case. And you may want to go back and really, you know, try doing a little bit more as far as preserving your battery life. Go through this video again and make sure you've done everything. But if you have like a 6S or an SE and below, 
I would strongly consider at least going to Apple and see what they say about your battery because there's a good chance that your battery is a bad battery. It's been used too many times. Too many cycles have been through too many cycles, you know, especially if you notice draining. If it goes from like 30% to like 10%, or if it goes from 30 to zero and then just dies, that probably means you have a bad battery. So there you have it, guys. Those are some tips to preserve and save battery life on iOS 11. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Also, make sure to subscribe for a lot more content coming soon. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.